In one month, I take my internal medicine boards, which is supposed to be one of the hardest exams I will ever take. In this series, we'll break down my strategy and approach to passing this exam with confidence so you can do the same. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today will be a fun but also a unique episode because I'm gonna be going through my experience of studying for my internal medicine boards. But if you're not in internal medicine or if you haven't finished medical school, the series may not be the most practical to you, so full disclaimer there, but feel free to watch it to get an idea of how I approach an important test coming up, how I study, what resources I use, and what strategies I use. And if internal medicine is something in your future, feel free to bookmark um, the podcast episode or the video that you'll be watching and make sure to come back to it later and make sure to also subscribe to get updates on future episodes that come out. But today will be our first episode in the series with the name I haven't decided yet, but essentially I'll be going over my experience over the next month and a half studying for my ABMIs, which is your internal medicine licensing exam. Um, it's supposed to be one of the hardest exams you take, super expensive, and nine hours roughly of taking something like this. And then in future episodes, I intend to show you how the strategy is going, if it's working, what I've made changes on, as well as giving you tips along the way for anyone that's in residency or interested in internal medicine. But first, let's go ahead and break down the time aspect. So at the moment of this episode, it is currently the start of July in 2022. I take my exam and essentially the mid on August 17th of 2022. So I have approximately about 40 to 50 days to study for the exam. And that is essentially mistake number one, which is I should have started my full dedicated prep much, much earlier. And then to add the cherry on top of my lack of preparedness to create a study schedule on time, I'm actually going out of town, actually out of the country for two weeks on vacation. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to create a study schedule that essentially allows for some studying on vacation, but not as much as I would be on my days off. And so in a second, I'm gonna go over this entire Excel sheet that I've created, and I'll tease you guys with it now, so you guys go ahead and watch the rest of the episode. But this is essentially gonna break down how many questions I need to do, how many questions I plan on doing on a day-by-day -day basis, as well as what topics I'll be covering where. Now in future episodes, we'll actually go over the nitty gritty of creating a study schedule, much more appropriate than mine. Most people have said anywhere from three to six months of actual studying, maybe two months, but definitely not a month before the exam. So that's that's definitely a blooper on my part. But next we have to talk about resources. Now I like to keep things as simple as possible and the most effective as possible. With time being a limited factor, the thing that I need to make sure that I do as much of is practice questions. The two main resources that everyone will recommend is one, UWorld, and two, MixApp. Now different people have different preferences on which one they will start with first. My institution gave me access to MixApp, so that's gonna be my number one priority of finishing. And then I will be doing UWorld because some people say that the actual board exam looks a little bit more familiar in terms of difficulty and trickiness to UWorld questions. But since I've already had access and paid for the mix app, I wanna make sure I focus on doing those first because it's still considered to be a great resource. And then I'll be moving to UWorld, which I'll show you as in that calendar in a second. So getting into this calendar, now in future episode, I'll probably give a link and a download link to uh, this template for free. But because right now I'm still mingling with it myself, I don't wanna give you guys a subpar calendar. But essentially what I did here is I looked over all the questions that are available in mix app as well as UWorld. Right now it's about 1200 in each and then calculated how many I've done through my residency. So as a making of this episode, I've done 575 questions of the 1200 in mix app, and I haven't even started UWorld yet. So essentially I've created a formula where if I do more questions, um, as I fill them in day by day, it starts to add more to my complete section. And then same thing for UWorld, and eventually I know how many questions I have remaining, which right now is a staggering 1800. Um, it also calculates what day of the week it is right now, as well as how many days I have left until test day. So as the making of this episode, I have approximately about 39 to 40 days left. And then I've tried to create myself buffers knowing that I'm gonna go on vacation. I wanna make sure that I'm not counting on actually studying every single day of that prep. It's ideal, but to make sure that I'm doing more questions daily, I purposely have forced myself to assume that I'm not gonna be studying every single day. And doing that, it essentially says, when you don't actually have 40 days to study, you have 32 days. I've essentially created a buffer of 20%. Again, whenever I give you guys this template for free, you guys will be able to make these changes. If you think you're really disciplined, you can make that buffer less. If you think you're not as disciplined, you can make that buffer more and thus do more questions to account for unproductivity later on. And then using the spreadsheet, I can calculate how many questions I should be doing based off of that buffer date as well as the amount of questions I have left. In the same way, I've also created a buffer for the amount of questions because one of the things we know is if I'm gonna say I'm gonna do 57 questions a day, if I do 20 or 40 on one day, it starts to snowball into future days and I don't wanna be overwhelmed closer to my test day. So in the same way, I've created a buffer about 25%. This is again, just kind of by feel, knowing that not every single day, maybe a fourth of the time, I may not be able to do those questions. And so now I've actually increased my daily amount of questions about 71 or closer to 80 questions per day that means on days that I don't actually work really hard I still have accounted for that laziness into my overall schedule 
Now the rest of the calendar is essentially counting for the rest of the weeks before my exam date, also counting for those two weeks that I'll be out of the country on vacation with my wife. So to do that, knowing that I have to do about 70 questions every single day, I know that on vacation, I'm simply not gonna be able to do that. And so on those days, I've made myself a small goal of doing about 10 to 20. And I've essentially now created a calendar where I can see how many questions I'll be doing each and every single week. Um, and so as you guys can see, I'll be going on vacation starting Monday as of the making of this episode. And so about two weeks, I'm gonna be doing just 20 questions each single day, so our goal about 160. Um, doing so, that means that I'm already behind my goal of 70 per day, and so when I come back, I really have to bump it up a little bit more, so I'll be doing three blocks of 40, so about 120, but these are all days off, so that actually works out in my favor, and doing so, I actually catch up my total questions, so I, not only do I calculate how many questions I'm doing per week, but also my cumulative questions. So I can see in my first week, I'll be 160, second week, 320, but then it jumps up to already getting to 1100, and then eventually 2000. Keep in mind, I only have 1800, so that essentially this gives me enough of a buffer space for one, if I be lazy, and then two, if I choose to actually do some of the questions that I've already done before or some of my mistakes, and essentially I'll be able to go through all the question blanks without really any issues. And then finally for this question strategy tab, I've essentially looked at how many questions I have to do for cardiology and mix app in the new world. Keep in mind, I haven't done new world yet, so I haven't added that in, but I've essentially said how many questions of each topic um, I have. So for example, mix app has about 120 cardiology topics. And so when I'm planning my daily, I can say, well, if I start Monday on cardiology, it's gonna take me six days to do all the cardiology questions. Again, I've done some of the cards questions, but overall that's kind of how my planning will work. So this way I'm not creating a schedule where I'm saying you'll be done with cardiology in two days, but then realistically realizing that there are a lot more questions and mix up for cardiology. So this way I can over plan and have tons of buffer every aspect of my schedule from the amount of days that I'm gonna be studying to the amount of questions I'll be doing per day, as well as the amount of days required for each individual topic. And again, if you're still watching this and you are not studying for your boards, this is generally the approach I'll recommend for any board exam anything like MCATs for anyone studying for step one, step two, um, step three, or any exam um, for school at any point. Finally, to end off today's episode, we can just talk about my overall approach for each individual day. So again, I've copied some of the things from the first page just to make it very easy and just have everything in one place. When I start doing UWorld, I'll go ahead and update this. So again, ideally, this will be included in that free template, just, just won't be available for this episode. But then I'm also including how many questions I'll be doing per day. And then finally, I've essentially copied that calendar, but now I started including what topics I'll be doing for that day. So for example, I know I've already done about 60 cardiology questions in mix app, so it leaves me about 60 left, which gives me a nice schedule of about three days to do those on my vacation. And then I move over to the next topic that's in my list, so dermatology, endocrine, and so forth. And then when I get back from vacation, I'll be doing a lot more questions, even more than mix up halves per topic. And so then I'll be able to do the rest of one topic and then start moving on to the next block. So usually I'll be covering about two topics per day. And then looking at this calendar, I've made it a goal of starting you world about two weeks before the exam, which I know is really tight, but knowing how many questions I'll be doing per day, um, essentially I think I'll be more than okay. And doing zero questions here is simply because August 2nd is my birthday and I plan on not studying that day. So, and then finally to keep myself accountable and to be able to quickly identify when I'm behind, essentially I've created a calendar starting from today's and making up today's episode for the topics that I cover as well as the amount of questions that I do per day and then adding those up and trying to see how well those relate to the overall calendar I created. Now this entire approach is designed for me to again have a study schedule that is more than over planning despite only having a month to study for this. Again, some of you guys may be asking questions such as what about other texts that are recommended? I simply just don't have time for them. Maybe I'll find ways to mingle them in as I start to be more disciplined with the schedule, but I'll also be including in future episodes how I'll include those texts as well as things like strategies using Anki. So again, if you wanna see how I do those, what cards I create, how I create them, and how I make sure that it helps me as I do my questions, make sure you subscribe to this episode as well as subscribing to the podcast if you're listening to this in audio form. But that guys is my overall approach for studying for my internal medicine boards. I'm really excited to document this journey, especially because it's gonna be overall stressful. So having that calendar really just made things a lot more realistic. Um, definitely is going to be very demanding upcoming couple of weeks, but realistic nonetheless. So hopefully this approach is helpful for any of you guys. And if anything, learn from me, maybe study a little bit sooner, even if it's not doing as crazy amount of questions as I am for this episode and for these series, at least you can space it out and saying like, okay, it's overall doable to do mix app and new world over the span of two to three months while still being in residency. The last thing that I wanna mention is that I have a huge benefit of taking a month off between finishing residency and starting my first job as an attending, mainly because of this two week vacation we're going on. But because of that is essentially silver lining where I have an extra couple of weeks before starting my first job in the first week of August. 
not everyone has that. So make sure you account for that into your schedule, especially if you're going to go straight from residency into fellowship or residency into your first job as an attending. It's not going to be as realistic to be able to do a calendar like I've created. So that means it's going to be much more important that you go ahead and start planning much earlier than I did. But as always, my friends, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, just go ahead and consider hitting that like button to show your support. Consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you're listening to this on a podcast, consider hitting that follow, subscribe, and as well as leaving a review on your favorite listening platform. But as always, my friends, thanks for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on yours and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.